Yes, it's been a while and I know on this channel you guys have not really seen me out on site. That's gonna change. Things are shifting up. I am out on site and I'm doing new and exciting things. What is in this box? Well, it's my drone. Let's get it out, shall we have a look? Here we go. So it is the Phantom 4 Pro RTK. Yes, I've been flying this drone for around about two years now. She's not too battered up. She hasn't really ever fallen out of the sky, thankfully. And today I want to talk about drone surveying and why it's important and more specifically how amazing it is for volumetric surveys. All right, let's just put this down. This bad boy. So yes, the Phantom 4 RTK, a amazing drone that I've been using for two years. And why have I been doing drone surveys? Well, why not? They're incredible. I've talked about the pros and cons of them before. And drone surveying really goes hand in hand with traditional surveying using a total station and a GPS controller, both of which is something that I still do. So drone surveying, why? Why should we get into it? So in this video, I'm going to take you out with Charlie, our apprentice, and we're doing a drone flight. I'm going to talk you through the advantages of doing a volume survey with a drone rather than the traditional method and hopefully get you guys excited about surveying with drones. So here you can see Charlie and I are on site. We're getting the drone set up and I'm just running through with Charlie exactly what it is that we are doing and uh, opening up the software, connecting RTK to GPS satellites. And I use a program called SightScan. I'm not gonna recommend them because I have had trouble with them in the past, but effectively, if you're doing a drone survey, you want to be flying using a program or a system or a software that allows you to do waypoints and that actually plans the route of the drone and takes photos at specific points and intervals in order to get the right overlap for your photogrammetry because this is really important for the accuracy of your survey. There's a lot of talk in the industry at the moment about people getting into drone surveying and they really do not understand how to get the best out of the drone and this gives poor quality results to the end user and then effectively the industry gets slammed for just not being that good. <sighs> Okay, I've got that out of my system. So we sent the drone up. Charlie, you can see here, is flying it over the stockpiles. We've mapped on the stockpiles exactly what it is that we want to pick up. And this flight time is around about eight minutes. Eight minutes. Now, you would never have been able to survey this site in eight minutes. You can see also there's a lot of machinery working around, so it's dangerous. That machinery would have to stop, which costs money. I would have to clamber up to the top of these stockpiles. Near on impossible, let alone talk about how dangerous that is. So surveying this traditional would have been quite hard. I'd probably have to go around the bottom of the batter and then I don't even know how I would have tackled it. It's it's not something I'll run and think about because I have a drone and I don't need to. So accuracy, yes, as long as you have a good overlap on your photographs, 80 to 90%, and you don't fly the drone super high and you make sure that you do a crosshatch drone flight, which is basically backwards and forwards and then cross, you're gonna get all the angles that you need and all the photos that you need to produce an accurate point cloud and survey. She's up in the air now, so I just have to make sure that I can keep a line of sight. And, uh, that no gust of winds occur and hopefully this light drizzle disappears as well. So you can see here on the screen the grid. This is where we're flying and it's taking a picture. You can see down here every time it kind of like stops and these are the waypoints and then when we kind of get to the end uh, it will come home. We've got up here RTK, we've got 17 satellites, the drone, the battery and how many meters we are from home. Okay, that's it now. She's done flight time. Uh, it was around about eight minutes. Let's bring her back in. Ground control points. You don't see us doing any ground control points on this flight, and that's because I've already picked up ground control points on this survey before. Let's now have a look the software side and what we got out of this survey. Right, okay, so we're now jumping into the software side of things. Uh, we've gone out and we've flown uh, with the drone and picked up the photos for the photogrammetry. And now we're going to input those photos because once you have the photos, they have to be processed in order to create the point cloud and the mesh model, which is what's gonna give you the model that you can pull the volumes from. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna use Drone Deploy. I'm just gonna use the trial so that if you want to try this out, you could. This video is not sponsored by Drone Deploy. Uh, I just thought I'd use it for the purpose of this video because it might be something that you wanna try and they do offer a trial. So here we go, we jump straight in and this is kind of my project desktop. Nice and easy, so you click here on the project and then it's got 
search by name or zip code. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to upload my photos because it was done on global and it's not a local coordinate system. So therefore it will know because each photo is georeferenced. So choose files. So we're going to go into here and we're going to grab all of our photos and open. Right, now this process is gonna take quite a while. There we go, it's actually put on the photos onto the area that we've surveyed, brought in from Google Earth. So there's 207 photos and we are going to click down here, create project. Perfect, yes it is in British National Grid and then we are going to start the upload. Perfect. Now this 207 photos is probably gonna take anywhere between an hour to four hours to process online. It's all done on the cloud, so we can just basically leave the computer to it, and then I'll come right back and we'll show you how we process the volumes and get the information. This video is sponsored by PQS Tech. Charlie is the apprentice at PQS Tech, so it was a delight to take him out on site and teach him all things about drone surveying. PQS Tech are known for delivering digital solutions to the construction industry. As well as traditional surveys, they are pushing the boundaries with the future of digital construction. In the world of surveying, setting out, digital twins, asset management, 3D machine control support, anything to do with the future of mobile mapping and also drone surveying. So please, if you need any of these services, go and check out PQS Tech below and obviously request me for your drone flight. Okay, let's get back to flying. Hi guys, so I'm back now and the model has fully loaded in. Photographs have been processed. Let's take a look. So here's the project here. So as you can see, this is Google Earth around here. And then inside is where our photos have been stitched together. And this is what we get. A nice clean picture of what was on site. For volumes, it's super, super easy. There's this little button over here called volume. You click on it and this stop pile here, you don't have to be super accurate because it's taking the lowest point and you click around the stockpile. And then here over on the left hand side, you will see it gives you the area. You can actually go in here and put a material. So you can type in a type of material and then you can put the density and then price if you need be, which is super, super useful for anyone. So surface, you can do terrain model or surface model and then best fit. So if you had a stockpile, but you wanted to know what the stockpile was, from the lowest point. So say if you couldn't see a certain area of the stockpile, but you know like a known point you wanted to measure off, you can do that, or you can do triangulated or linear fit. And yeah, it's gonna give you all the information you need, area, cut, fill, net volume, material volume. It's perfect, it's done very quickly. Now what I do want to just show you here is if we go back and we do export. So here, here are a few options that you've got. You've got elevation, um, so that brings up a nice little elevation model. You can go DTM, so you can export for your client a digital terrain model, which is super good because you can just bring it into CAD, tidy it up, and then you've got an actual 2D drawing that you can send to someone. That would take a lot of time to process if you've done it with a total station or a GPS because you've obviously got your points and your codes. This works quite nicely when done with a drone. And um, what I like is the point cloud. So when you do a drone survey, you come out with a point cloud. So this is really cool because every single tiny, tiny point here on this screen is a measurement with a GPS coordinate. So this gives us a good look at what is being measured. So you can see here, this is the concrete slab. And then up here, we've got our stockpiles. And when this loads up fully, you'll see how super clear it is. So you can even zoom in to see the stockpile that we're measuring from above and you can tweak this if you need to. Um, but yeah, it is super, super cool. And you can pull as much information off this point cloud as you want. Just think about how long it would take you to physically measure every time. You just couldn't, it's impossible to get every single point. And the one thing when I was starting out with drone surveying is thinking about accuracy and I was super like, oh no, I'm not gonna go into this because it's way off. If you put GCPs in, um, so ground control points, that's what it stands for when you're doing any drone work, the accuracy is really good. And I fly a drone with um, RTK, so it, so it knows its positioning and it knows elevation. And once I'm fixed into satellites, I'm normally getting anywhere between 10 and 20 mil, which, something like this is more than enough 
So there we go, folks. This is the software side of things and the output. My client just wants an Excel sheet with the volumes in, but you can print, you can print off reports, um, an Excel sheet, and then a PDF which shows the stockpiles. So you can label the stockpiles up for the client. The deliverables are second to none and super efficient. If you think about it, drone flight is eight minutes. Processing, you can be doing other work because it's done mainly on the computer. And then by pulling off the information, it's dead quick. You know, it's a few clicks of a button. So there you go. Hopefully I've sold to you why it's so important to consider drones um, for drone surveying. The other thing that I'm going to add in, huge health and safety. You see these machines working here to go on this compost heap, to climb these compost heap, near on impossible to cover yourself health and safety wise. We were able to be away from them, drone survey it without being anywhere near anyone safely, which is super, super important in construction. Okay, so I hope that's given you a brief introduction into drone surveying. Charlie and I had a blast. Charlie's actually working right now to get his ACFC so that he can go and fly out on his own. It's super exciting. I think it's a great industry for young people to get into. I do think you need a background into surveying. Please don't go into drone surveying if you do not have a background in setting out and surveying. Just don't. You need to understand how it works and the delivery rules. But if you are looking to get into drone surveying, like I said, recommend recommend the DJI Phantom 4. I think there are more updated versions of that product now, but it is worth the investment. If you like this video, please comment down below, hit like and subscribe. And this video has been brought to you by PQS Tech Solutions, the sponsors. So please, if you need any of these services go and check out pqs tech below and thanks for sponsoring the video